I always wondered what that weird squeaking noise was that had started developing just after I finished doing the scene that you just saw. And um, when I set about fixing the exhaust leak on the car, I noticed that some shiny shards were lying in the engine bay and quickly found out it was this. This is the pulley that mounts onto the generator and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty gone. Uh, there is no, really no other way to put it. And you may notice that the casting isn't the best quality either. Even down here it's pretty porous and when you look at the braking surface you can see bubbles right where you know, the pieces broke off. So, my guess is that it was sufficient for, you know, parade driving, Sunday, uh, 30 kilometers an hour rides, but when I beat this thing onto the autobahn, well, that was it. And um, since the replacements that are available are from the same aluminium cast material, I kind of do not trust the quality of them. They may be better, I mean 30 years have passed since the restoration of the car, but um, I'm not going to take any chances. They're expensive too, and um, I'm going to machine my own. So I've got a drawing, and um, I guess the most exciting part is going to be matching this small taper in here. I have machined uh, MK tapers a while back for my lathe and um, they were quite tough to get to match perfectly but they were long tapers. This one is a pretty short and pretty steep taper, 10 degrees and um, it's going to take some back and forth. So I took the generator out as well, it was just a single bolt and we're going to use the taper that's on the shaft as a template to machine this one here. This is a bit large for my machine, so I'm going to reach out to the friend with the big guns and uh, machine it as hi at his shop. Nothing else to say. Here we go. So, the pulley is made, I couldn't resist painting it, don't worry about these imperfections, there's going to be a washer on top of it anyway. 
It's got quite a bit more heft to it than this one does, but I think the original one was cast iron either way, so the bearings should take it. At least it doesn't have the amount of imbalance that this one does. And, um, you know, for a pure reason of saving material and weight, I uh, did these undercuts in here. Not for optics or anything like that, no, no, no. Problem is, the generator isn't here with me right now. I took it apart to get the shaft out of there to properly adapt the taper. <laughs> and that's when I noticed that the windings were fried. I have no idea how this thing was still able to work the way it did. Maybe I fried it in process, I don't know. Um, I did quite a bit of night driving. But um, yeah, it's going to have to be fixed up. And this is where either the video will stop right now and there will be another part of me fixing the generator up myself or the video will continue and somebody did the fixing up for me. We'll see. So either goodbye or... not. Well, no two-week cliffhanger for you guys because the guy whom I made the pulley at decided to wind the generator windings for me and um, very kindly opted to make some photos as well. So in disassembly he noticed that somebody had been in there and uh, tinkered about with it already and um, well the windings were just shot. You could tear them out there, they were not really adhering to each other anymore. To wind the new coils he had some special jigs with lots of holes drilled in them. You put the pins into the proper places and wind the field winding wire across it. Then it gets bandaged up and um, well has to be test fitted of course before finally dunking it in some insulating resin. Two coils right here freshly packed and fitted in place, fixed in place with glue just to keep them from vibrating loose. And he let me do the final assembly with soldering the wires in place where they belong. And forgive me, but I decided to remount the generator off camera. It's really just one bolt and um, it's quite tight in there. It was dark, it was cold, I didn't really want to set up the camera. So um, yeah, now it's in place and now we can check if this thing is running or not. I also put some center punch marks onto the housing of the generator just to tell me where I need to set the brushes for daytime or nighttime for driving. Now it doesn't involve so much guesswork and that should keep me from burning out the generator windings ever again. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching as always and see you guys later.